Um, so today our proposed um, project is Type 3 project and it's the transforming of the liberal arts through innovation and entrepreneurial skills. Um, this project emulates the vision of the National Professional Development Framework in that we're trying to transform the teaching and learning experiences of academic staff and in turn the undergraduate students of the liberal arts in fostering a culture that fully embraces entrepreneurship and education. This project is very much a collaborative project and interdisciplinary project involving academics from a, a broad range of different um, subject disciplines and it also involves continuous collaboration and input from our students. Our students will be at all times, will be um, present at every meeting, at every professional development um, session and also at workshops. So as you can see on the left hand side of the slide, we have all our objectives um, for our project. Now, in order to achieve, successfully achieve these um, objectives, uh, collaborations are key. So this project is very much, as I was saying, collaborative um, internally with our staff and our students, but also we're involving collaborations with key relevant fora, organizations and other institutions um, regionally and internationally as well. Um, for example, our collaboration with the uh, Midwest Regional Skills Forum and our Midwest Action Plan for Jobs. This fora um, provided inf infrastructure for educational institutions to provide support in developing and maintaining relationships between the educational institutions and industry and employers and to kind of interrogate, interrogate the employer's needs and skills um, that are needed. Um, also, this project was very much developed with already existing networks so that in, so that the existing networks were fully committed uh, to the project because they share the same matching priorities as our project here. So you can see from here our institutional priorities, um, our um, Mary Mackin College Strategic Plan 2018 to 2023. So this project very much helps us as an institution to realise our strategic plan um, in developing professional development for our staff to ensure that our programs remain innovative and that we also integrate 21st century uh, workplace skills. Um, it also, over on the right hand side, the project also very much links with regional, national and international priorities in the areas of teaching, learning and employability. Um, in the two main areas really, in developing and strengthening entrepreneurship within higher education and also strengthening and broadening our engagement with industry and enterprise. Um, so good afternoon, my name is Rebecca Purcell and I'm a lecturer in business in the Faculty of Arts in Mary Immaculate College on our Thurless campus. Um, so I'm briefly going to outline some of the project outputs and then I'm going to hand over to my colleague Paul who's going to talk about how we're going to actually achieve those outputs. Um, so our project is structured around four work plans which comprise a total of 10 proposed outputs and I'm going to borrow uh, from my colleague Paul now earlier when we were talking about the project and he used a really good term which was the, the Greenfield site and that's really how we see this project. So this is an initial project, it's not something that's happening currently in the institution. Um, so to use a building analogy, we've got a Greenfield site, we're hoping during the course of this project to maybe dig some foundations, start to build those walls and that's really, you know, realistically what we feel we can achieve in the um, 12 month time frame. So, and, and taking that into account then, we recognise that these outputs are proposed outputs because, you know, the, the work plans flow, flow chronologically um, from each other and findings and evidence from one particular um, work plan uh, from the research from engagement with our stakeholders may inform um, outputs that we had not seen at this stage or perhaps unintended outputs that we haven't uh, foreseen. So um, our first proposed output is to identify current uh, enterprise and industrial needs and scope of future vision for entrepreneurial teaching and learning in the liberal arts. Um, and we aim to do this through the creation of a VLE repository on entrepreneurial education, which will be, will be made available to all staff and students within the liberal arts in Mary Immaculate College. Um, and within this, we hope to really analyse where we are currently with regards to uh, the delivery of 21st century workplace skills across our liberal arts in Mary Immaculate College. So we, we need to engage in a mapping exercise to understand what's actually happening in terms of current practice and our programmes at the moment. 
Um, our second uh, uh, work plan looks at exploring the values and needs and motivations regarding the incorporation of entrepreneurial education in the liberal arts. Um, and the specific outputs around this include um, developing a report on entrepreneurial education and the liberal arts. So really, you know, reporting to our key stakeholders about what we've discovered, particularly from the first um, uh, the first work plan in terms of where we are at the moment and how will that inform uh, where we want to proceed with the project going forward. Um, leading on from that, we hope to develop a professional development plan where we will look at trying to integrate entrepreneurial education across the liberal arts. Um, and we're going to have an ongoing development of our uh, entrepreneurial education uh, digital learning um, platform we would hope to or we would envisage that we would develop uh, podcasts vlogs and other kind of digital resources that can support staff and students who want to learn more about the project as it's progressing and learn more about our findings um, our third work plan focuses on developing the professional development program leading on from the plan that is envisaged in the second work plan. Um, so within that we've got two primary outputs where we hope to develop the professional development program on entrepreneurial education for staff in the liberal arts and Paul will talk about more about actually implementing that. Um, and we want to look at you know following best practice in entrepreneurial education, look at developing a framework for the cross-curricular integration of entrepreneurial education in the liberal arts. So rather than seeing it as, you know, entrepreneurship or learning um, about or through entrepreneurship as a distinct kind of module or a distinct area of study, looking at how we can learn about and through entrepreneurship and for entrepreneurship across um, modules in a cross curricular way. So across the variety of disciplines that exist in the liberal arts. And um, lastly, so our, our fourth uh, work project, our work plan looks at developing an entrepreneurial culture within the liberal arts. Now, this really is, you know, this particular one is focused on the um, sustainability of the project because we understand that to develop a culture, uh, to embed any kind of culture is a very long term um, process and it's, a, it's a, <laughs> a life's work project in some cases. So we really understand that what we're doing here is laying the foundations and kind of opening up those conversations that may lead to an awareness of the you know, advantages and the importance of having an entrepreneurial um, culture in our institution and particularly within the liberal arts. Um, so we feel that that, that discussion around um, and further development of the framework looking at the cross-curricular approach of ult uh, entrepreneurial education will go some way towards achieving that. Um, as Maeve mentioned, um, MIC at the moment has many uh, links, regional links with um, business and industry and we hope to uh, maintain those existing links but also to um, foster additional links with uh, business and industry both regionally and nationally and and uh, try to create that kind of collaborative relationship specifically with the liberal arts um, in terms of supporting that, the development of an entrepreneurial culture. Um, and lastly, in terms of looking at capacity building among staff within the liberal arts and students within the liberal arts, we want to look at supporting entrepreneurial education research um, and supporting collaborative research relationships with other institutions that are perhaps, you know, going through this process or have gone through this process. Um, and also looking at collaborative research relationships with business and industry who will be interested in terms of understanding, um, you know, how, how what we're learning through this project could support support them in terms of um, students having the particular employability skills that Maeve mentioned that they are they're looking for that they would have communicated with us through this project. So I'll now hand you over to my colleague Paul who's going to talk about um, the implementation of the project. Thank you Rebecca. My name is Paul Collins and I teach at the music department in Mary Macaulay College. Um, in starting into this greenfield site project we've been aware of a couple of things Number one, we're very much aware of how, how much we can actually get done in the year uh, that's, that's given over to this project. Number two, we're very much aware that we have among our student population champions, we have change agents, and we want to certainly cash in on that as best we can. We're aware too that among the staff, we also have change agents and we have champions. And informally, we're aware of, of who they are already on the multi-campus um, in, in, in multi institution that we have. We're aware too that for many who might be resistors uh, among faculty, that this fundamentally indicates a shift in the concept of uh, what higher education is. 
So for many in the liberal arts, this is a this they're traditionally used to a bildung model of self-formation. So this is a fundamental shift in in ideology of what edu uh, higher education is for them. So this is the first step in creating a more entrepreneurial campus for for, for us. And we're very conscious that we will have resistance, we will have barriers, and how we in fact will will actually overcome them. So to start off the project in the identification stage and in the, the scoping uh, stage of the project to, to begin, we're going to do a search for literature. And this will incorporate reports and policies and academic papers. We'll be looking at HE Academy papers, IBEC um, uh, documents, documents from QQA in, 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 in the United Kingdom, for example, and other documents. Looking at those and also seeing how we can embed 21st century skills into the programmes uh, in Mary I. Secondly then, at the engagement stage in dialogue, we're going to bring in all our stakeholders with staff and students together. Um, I mentioned students as one of our principal resources. We're, we're conscious that students can, can collaborate with us in two ways. Number one, students can offer a very frank evaluation of what the existing HE provision is like for them at the college regardless of what subject area they're in. And we're hoping, too, that when we get onto the focus groups, which I'll discuss in a moment, that students will actually become pedagogical consultants in the process, at the heart of the process. So this engagement and dialogue and information exchange will be with students, staff, and also regional stakeholders in enterprise in the Midwest. Moving on then to the exploration stage uh, of the project, we hope to develop a questionnaire, an online questionnaire. There's one established already, which will circulate to staff and students with regard to the level of entrepreneurial skills, capacities, thinking, mindset that they currently embrace. And having distributed that, that questionnaire, we'll do some data gathering initially and get some analysis of, of that um, and let that feed forward, the analysis of that phase feed forward to the focus groups that follow. The focus groups will be with staff and students, and these will explore not only the good stuff, but the bad stuff. Uh, values, needs, and opportunities, yes, but also the barriers and resistance. And this hopefully will emerge in a very, very frank way during these focus groups, and we'll be able to discuss these in a very frank way uh, with both staff and students at these uh, PD sessions later on. So having... Um, gather some additional data in the focus groups then, moving on to the PD sessions. The first one will be the most general of them all. What is entrepreneurship and enterprise and HE? What are the skills needed for 21st Workplace? How do we develop these as uh, graduate attributes? Um, and crucially, staff will need to see the difference between uh, teaching and learning about entrepreneurship, which would uh, incorporate traditional pedagogical skills, and education for entrepreneurship, which of course will, will involve more active learning uh, and the transition between the two, and, and that both are needed, not one, not the other, but both. And then having done that, we'll report back to staff where the findings from the questionnaire and the focus groups and gather feedback from that session. The second PD session will be a little bit more focused looking at entrepreneurship education within the arts and humanities. So now we come down the funnel a little bit more. What does it mean to move from an enterprise awareness? So in other words, staff being, or, and students both actually, being aware of how un enterprising they are in their own lives. What does it mean to move from that to an entrepreneurial mindset, capability, and finally, then hopefully to entrepreneurship effectiveness? Um, there's a natural fit between the arts and humanities and social entrepreneurship. So that's something we need to explore particularly with staff. So staff and students together finding opportunities to make a difference in social and community settings. How can staff and students be more entrepreneurial within the organisation it's, itself together? So that would focus on entrepreneurship and also we look at case studies with them of how entrepreneurship um, um, has been um, developed and fostered within the arts and humanities in other institutions. PD session three then looking at creativity and innovation. Um, particularly looking at PBL, how we can develop um, problem-based learning uh, within, and indeed project-based learning, within um, the arts and humanities. Finally, PD session four will look at the area of the very important area of design thinking. What does design thinking mean for uh, our, our undergraduates in, the, in, in, in Mary I? Particularly looking at translating knowledge into action. It's, it's like as if entrepreneurship is the flip side of the liberal arts. Traditionally, liberal arts faculty and possibly students too are suspicious 
of entrepreneurship. They think it's only associated with business, but of course it's not. So it's moving, it's moving, it's a shift in mindset. And design thinking gets them to look at what are the unmet needs of end, u end users. Um, and we'll get them to look at that in that lab. Finally, we'll, look at, we'll have some workshops. We may only get a chance for one. We're realistic in what we can accomplish in this project. So if we only get one project or one workshop done, that workshop will focus then with all of the stakeholders, with people from the, from the Midwest in, involved in. And I forgot to mention too, of course, any of our alumni that are entrepreneurs. And there's an off-campus program in Mary I too. And we'll be considering what the implications is, the, is for, for the off-campus program. Can we get some of our students working with entrepreneurs during their off-campus year or for even part of it? And at the end of the whole phase, we'll bring people together to establish this framework collectively. Thank you. <laughs>